Shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Stay tuned near the end to hear more about that great sponsor. Turtle Rock Studios, an independent studio turned Valve South Branch, was coming off a once-in-a-lifetime success of the mod-turned-full-fledged co-op zombie shooting game Left 4 Dead. Valve South was short-lived. Turtle Rock Studios would rise again, this time teaming up with THQ, scratch that, Take Two as a publisher, set to launch a 4 vs 1 asymmetric multiplayer shooter dubbed Evolve. Four humans or hunters are pitted against a single monster. The craziness of being the predator or the prey is amplified by your choice of hunters or monsters, as well as your choice of map. But despite the fact that Evolve was positioned to be a major hit, complete with merchandise, Funko Pops, and even a mobile game spinoff, Evolve would ultimately fall short of most metrics, and in just two years, the game's support would be abruptly cut, and the game's development would come to an end. The game's still dragging around in maintenance mode five years later, but it's a husk of what it used to be. So what went wrong with Evolve? A game that was expected to be a competitor alongside Take-Two's Grand Theft Auto, Bioshock, and Red Dead Redemption. How did a title that was expected to reach Olympic heights fail to last more than two calendar years? On this episode of Death of a Game, we take a look at the action shooter that I believed helped lead the way for many more asymmetric titles like it to come onto the scene, Evolve, and cover the mystery of its quick demise. Pay attention to the hints along the way, and stay attentive until the end of the video for the final deduction, when we put the case to rest using the clues and evidence obtained thus far. Let's waste no more time. There's a monster to catch, detectives. The story starts back following Turtle Rock Studios, who were behind Half-Life 2 Deathmatch, Counter-Strike Source, and Left 4 Dead successes. They had dissolved following an unsuccessful transition into being a satellite office for Valve. Turtle Rock Studios was acquired by Valve back in 2008, however the company's previous IPs were lost due to a failed bid as Valve South. Before dissolving the Valve South division in 2010, Valve reportedly gave employees the opportunity to join their main headquarters, which many would accept but Valve would allow them to retain their previous name as they still had ambitions of keeping on as a company. Turtle Rock would go on to assist Valve on Left 4 Dead 2 in 2010 before starting production on their first new game since regrouping in 2011 and contracting with publisher THQ. Signing with THQ meant starting development on a groundbreaking multiplayer experience that was the most ambitious thing we've ever attempted, according to Phil Robb, the studio's COO. This title was, like all of Turtle Rock Studios' projects, a multiplayer-focused cooperative title. Turtle Rock Studios would explain they loved to make co-op games due to experiences they had growing up with Secret of Mana, which, uh, ditto by the way, guys. But with their new project dubbed Metamorphosis, Turtle Rock Studios wanted to make something more ambitious than just a shooter. However, as Turtle Rock Studios producer and writer Matt Colville stated on Reddit, they were unable to get that game greenlit, and were forced to settle on a 4 vs 1 multiplayer shooter due to financial constraints. THQ would declare bankruptcy in May of 2011 and be compelled to sell off its intellectual properties and assets in a bankruptcy auction. Metamorphosis was one of the projects purchased, and they would be purchased by none other than Take-Two, the publisher behind Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead Redemption. Take-Two's bid of $10.894 million included funding and helping Turtle Rock Studios to create the title through hirings and more, blew over Turtle Rock Studios' own bid of $250,000, which was allegedly all they could muster. Perhaps TR's liberation here could have been a crucial turning moment in another timeline. However, we're putting the cart before the horse, and they ultimately lost the bid. But many people didn't realize what Take-Two was capable of yet. By February of 2014, Metamorphosis would be renamed to Evolve, the ultimate big hunt, and it would be shown to the public for the first time. With stunning graphics and a ton of action, the game was sure to please. The concept of the game was simple, four hunters versus one monster. There's four different classes to choose from. Your major damage dealer is the assault, followed by your crucial trapper function which could track the monster, and then the medic could keep everybody alive as the name implied, and the support player had a shield and cloaking equipment to aid the team. 
On the other hand, you have the monster being played by a single person. Goliath was the monster in this scenario, at the start at least. A super athletic giant monster capable of leaping great distances and chasing down the aforementioned hunters. There would be more monsters available at launch and afterward as well. And Evolve the monster was definitely the main focus. It was this aspect and feature that made the game finally stand out. This is evident in the game's gameplay as well as its visual awe-inspiringness. Clearly a lot of focus is put on the monsters themselves. The game begins with the hunters and monsters spawning into the world, with the monsters obtaining a slight advantage, like a couple of seconds, while you focus on eating local prey to fill up your evolution meter. When this fills up, the next level begins, and you as the monster would grow in size and strength. In essence, the hunters are the strongest early in the game, as they pursue the monster and try to kill him early game before he gets more powerful. Meanwhile, the monster becomes more powerful as the game progresses, if the players can make it that far. Early on, both the hunters and monsters are sort of wandering around in a cat and mouse style of game, but near the end of the game, at stage 3, the match dynamics shift and the monster is assigned an objective to destroy. This brings the map's action to a close, but the ultimate goal still remains the same regardless of the stage. Either eliminate the creature, or eliminate the hunters. Rinse and repeat as needed. According to IGN, this wouldn't be too formulaic because the gameplay is always shifting and becomes exponentially more tense and dramatic as the game progresses. Despite this, there was no mention of the single-player component of Evolve. While Left 4 Dead was largely a multiplayer game, it could also be played single-player with a decent, basic story to follow. The multiplayer gameplay was the centerpiece of Evolve right from the start. But if that wasn't enough, there didn't seem to be much else to offer players, which was likely to annoy many fans of the vintage Turtle Rock Studios experience. But expectations were exceedingly high following the successes of Left 4 Dead as a franchise, and those expectations could end up being as deadly as a monster in Evolve. Evolve would be shown off once more, this time in full force at E3 2014, where it would win four Game Critic Awards. Evolve was an excellent example of a showcase AAA title. It was created for 20-minute games in which four hunters would work together to eliminate one increasingly dangerous monster. The question of is there enough content was already rearing its head though so early on. Evolve was developed from the ground up for DLC according to Turtle Rock co-founder Chris Ashton, and is thus planned for a long life, well, as long as it's financially viable. Which is reasonable given that it is after all a company, as he clearly states. However, telling your audience who's curious about future content that you will have paid content available soon after the game releases when you haven't even released the game yet doesn't really address the issue and is kind of tone deaf. The issue is that there's a perceived lack of content in the game before it has even been thoroughly evaluated. It also gives the impression that you won't go down with the ship because you're probably not generating enough money before that happens. If anything, it appears as if you're implying that the game was designed from the ground up to make money, which all games or products are technically that, but they are significantly more. They have to be after all. There isn't much art or originality in just having money, is there? Some level of insight or cleverness is required. It makes some wonder about the game's motivations, especially given that it's supposed to be supported by a firm notorious for aggressive monetization tactics, especially even in 2021. Was Evolve intended to be a cash cow for Take-Two, which had invested over $10 million in the game before it ever launched? I mean, a price tag like that before you've ever even sold a copy? You'd think they would have that in mind at least, right? And with the gameplay being simplified and a strong focus on attracting a bigger audience, Evolve was starting to look like it had to be a blockbuster hit in order to meet the publishers and game expectations being placed on it, which isn't a good paradigm to be operating under, especially for a studio that hasn't worked under that degree of pressure before. Without a doubt, Evolve was wowing the crowd. The title even intrigued me personally, but Evolve wasn't an independent game. And this wasn't Turtle Rock, the old Source Engine developer. Were they going to have enough time to achieve the degree of success they needed if they didn't have it right away? Evolve would face a delay from their original targeted launch of October 2014, now targeting the next year, February 10th, 2015. The delay would appear to be beneficial though, as it would allow Evolve to do additional alpha and beta testing, starting on the PC first with the game expanding quickly to the Xbox and PlayStation platforms. Evolve Alpha users have apparently played over 1 million rounds by November of 2014. Turtle Rock would provide a slew of other statistics as well, clearly pleased with the game's response or attention thus far. However, they didn't provide player counts, which would appear to be the most natural and obvious data to display, just saying. Xbox would have its alpha carry on with no hitches, meanwhile Evolve on PS4 would be delayed due to firmware issues. 
When questioned about eSport aspirations, which I think is a fair question given them calling Evolve a competitive shooter, Turtle Rock would state that, I think a lot of our eSport ambitions are going to be defined by players. The thing is, nobody makes a game for eSports. They make a game that is fun. And then the games come out and some of them work for eSports, and some of them don't. It's defined by the people playing them, and I don't think our game will be any different. This is a very well thought out perspective and viewpoint. So while Turtle Rock wasn't opposed to esports, they weren't going to force anything to happen. However, if things did start to go in that direction, they did state that their parent company would back it. And that was good to hear at least. Beefing up the otherwise lean content offering for Evolve was another game mode announced and introduced December 2014. The new mode, Evacuation, wasn't exactly designed to be a premiere mode, but more so a mix of playing other different modes. There's various schools of thoughts here in regards to this, though. More gameplay options assist to bring variation and longevity to the game. However, as the IGN article also points out, there's an element of not trusting the core mode, which is Hunt, more. After all, many hugely popular shooters and competitive games only have one actual game mode. But I think that more variety in this case was probably good, though. Evolve would go into open beta in January 2015, exactly one month before its official release and the beta would include a new Kraken monster, one that could fly, as well as a test of the main Hunt gameplay. As expected, the little exposure to the game left a positive impression. With Evolve, the visual capability was on full display in the short amount of time that it was tested, and fans were appreciating the unique take on the multiplayer shooter genre. While Evolve was wowing fans, further information about their business model and strategy for the future was revealed the next month. And it didn't look good. For starters, the game was rumored to be launching as a multiplayer-only title for a full $60 price tag. In addition, the game would contain microtransactions and planned DLC for day one and the whole next year. But wait, there's more. They were also going to have pre-orders on the game, and one of the incentives for pre-ordering was access to the Behemoth, a new gigantic monster joining the fray. While you could technically buy the monster separately for $15 when it was set to appear in the following spring in 2016, tying a monster to a pre-order irritated players because of how it was done in the end. The game, the season pass, and the monster expansion would cost $80 in the Digital Deluxe Edition, meanwhile the $100 Monster Race Edition would grant you exclusive access to the Behemoth monster for 30 days. All of this is on top of the previously mentioned introduction of a season pass, which was a novel market concept at the time that added four extra hunters to the game. The plethora of monetization opportunities and restrictions being thrown at the player base were discouraging them from even participating in the game in the first place. It was also creating a negative stigma surrounding the game as well. All the while there were rumblings about the game's lack of content, or worse, content being kept on purpose in order to commercialize it later. Things didn't look any better optically when a mobile spin-off game for Evolve dubbed Evolve Hunter's Quest would just mysteriously appear out of nowhere on the iTunes store as a Match 3 style of game. However, the app was intended to be a companion app and not a spin-off game, which I think is actually a great idea and I wish we would see more support for this type of thing. However, in the heat of the moment, sometimes good actions can appear to be bad decisions. With the popularity of mobile games on the rise in 2015, the audience was becoming increasingly concerned about revenue concerns as a result of the partnership with Evolve. Turtle Rock was moving on, not that they had much of a choice since they weren't in command of the project or IP in the first place, they were pleased with the feedback they had gotten so far from the game from the mini betas and alphas that had taken place. Turtle Rock would release a video demonstrating the different ways to play Evolve single player wise, recognizing a perceived deficiency in my opinion, however none of these modes would seem to deserve a full price tag as they would just essentially be multiplayer modes with bots. While some may argue that Left 4 Dead was technically also that, there's two major distinctions between the two games. For starters, Left 4 Dead is more than just fighting each other. It also includes elements of survival against a continuous zombie threat. In Left 4 Dead, fighting other players is actually a secondary mode. However, in Evolve, it's the primary, which is the opposite. The second point to mention is that while being developed for cooperative play, Left 4 Dead single player works rather well on its own, and perhaps that's part of the issue. With Evolve, you may be cooperating, but you're cooperating against an enemy player. In Evolve, there isn't a comparable format or style of play to Left 4 Dead's co-op option, which made the game's single player a bit underwhelming. All of the commercialization issues become much more detrimental as a result as well. Evolve would debut on February 10th, 2015 after riding a wave of anticipation despite any negative press, thanks to the fun of the game and the strength of the company's name. 
The debut, on the other hand, fell short of expectations right away, receiving a 77 out of 100 on Metacritic and a 4.3 out of 10 from 970 user scores. Evolve, according to Steam, would score a 67% mixed rating from users there. IGN rated the multiplayer shooter quite high at a 90 out of 100, stating that Evolve is a deeply rewarding multiplayer experience that packs both brains and brawn, which is one of those reviews that doesn't look especially good in hindsight. PC Gamer gave the game a more reasonably positive score, an 83 out of 100, stating that it was a refreshingly asymmetrical FPS with terrific competitive depth, but the thrill of the hunt eventually begins to wane. The Gymquisition would also score the project, giving it a 60 out of 100 and proclaiming in their review that as an overall game it offers some basic shooter with nice gimmick, and I do think you can gather some friends together to get an afternoon's worth of laughs out of it. I don't believe there's enough mileage to have those laughs regularly, though, and certainly not enough to where I'd recommend rushing out and getting it so soon after launch. The majority of critics agreed that the game could be entertaining, but as Jimquisition pointed out, there was a real concern about how long that enjoyment could last, and this was negatively hurting people's perception of the game. Not to mention the controversy surrounding the game's macro-level microtransactions, which wasn't helping matters. In fact, because of the Day 1 DLC, gamers on Steam were criticizing Evolve after factoring in all of the DLC and add-on content, they were able to calculate that the total paid content was 44 pieces of content. Which, whether or not it's required to buy, just seems like an excessive amount. Even yet, there was enough good there to work with Evolve. According to Steam charts, Evolve would reach a peak population of 27,403 players and an average of 9,030. Both of which are respectable amounts, but just not respectable enough for the expectations being placed on the title. And unfortunately, the numbers for Xbox One and PlayStation 4 are not publicly available. However, even before the game had released, well-known game analysts were questioning if Evolve would be even able to achieve the success it was aiming for, citing low Twitch viewership statistics in beta, which dropped from 7.2 million in alpha to 1.7 million viewers in beta. Now, I don't know whose idea this was, but it kind of contradicts what they said previously about letting an esports scene kind of form organically. But 2K and Turtle would team up with ESL and set up a Pro-AM tournament targeted for PAX East. Now, hosting a Pro-AM tournament period doesn't mean you're forcing the affair exactly, but they would follow that up with a Proving Grounds tournament set in the summer with a prize pool of over $100,000. At that point, you just got an Observer mode, and have only been out for like three months. It's probably not the best idea to focus on a competitive scene yet, especially when the population of the game in April of 2015 had already dropped down to 4,044 players peak, and 1,508 players average. It made the attempts at being an esport or even competitive shooter seem rather in vain. Were they trying to use esports as an advertisement tool to bring interest to the game, perhaps? Ultimately, this entails injecting money into a system that lacks infrastructure artificially, which is yet another boomer bust strategy. And while Evov wasn't unpleasant to watch or spectate, you did run into the issue of longer periods of the game just showing the game's weaknesses, which one of the major drawbacks we've already discussed is that the game is essentially just a deathmatch, and it's not good enough to compete on that basis with the other multiplayer shooters on that basis alone. It makes the Monster vs. Hunter gameplay feel more like a gimmick than a genuine game, as others have described already. That's because the gaming loop is the issue, not the addition of new monsters, which they would continue to add. Apart from the aforementioned deathmatch goal, there wasn't much else to do on the level besides just hunt down the monster or flee from it. A huge portion of a 20 minute match could just be spent running around, and while the game certainly looked nice, it wasn't great enough for where running around in a pretty world is fascinating gameplay. Another significant issue with the game's design is the heavy reliance on cooperation. Because a monster doesn't have to worry about three potentially random teammates and not being up to par or just, well, not functioning together as a team, playing as a monster is extremely difficult to balance, especially when monsters like the Wraith would have difficult mechanics like stealth to work with, which would result in it having an overwhelming win percentage. Not to mention both teams are basically playing two different games. As lead writer Matt Colville points out, Hunters do not level up or gain new abilities in the same way that the monster does, so if you have a full pre-made to play as the hunters, Evolve automatically leads to a better gameplay experience. However, as Colville put it, asking your audience to spend $240 on a game with their pals wasn't a reasonable request, and this wasn't an outlandish notion, because the game is fundamentally problematic if you don't play with your pals. 
because hunters must work together to defeat the monster. Collaboration and cooperation? They're not optional, they're essential. The problem with Evolve, as Colville wonderfully described in a post-mortem, was that it required all four players, or hunters, to be role-playing effectively. While it can lead to some truly incredible experiences when everyone's really trying their best to work together and fulfill their role, they're few and far in between. They're also not really repeatable for a large-scale gameplay with random players. These issues all would contribute to a lower player base than expected for the game, but worse, would continue to contribute to the hemorrhaging of the population going forward. By May 2015, Evolve will have sold 2.5 million copies, earning Take Two CEO Strauss Zelnick's praise as a key long term franchise. Take Two President Carl Sladoff remarked on the same earnings call that Turtle Rock would continue to support Evolve throughout the rest of the year, which was good news. This meant that more characters, modes, and other features were on the way. Despite the fact that the Steam population had decreased 1,694 players peak and 709 players average by May 2015, it was still encouraging to see that Take-Two wasn't abandoning ship just yet. One of the new modes to come to Evolve was an arena mode, which would focus on making the game more of a straight-up brawl, as Turtle Rock would put it. The contest would be limited to a 6 minute time limit. While I believe this is a fantastic idea in theory, because it solves the problem of having too much running around, the problem is, is that it doesn't address the earlier issue we also outlined, which is that, technically speaking, you still have to run around, it's just not as long. <laughs> which actually contributes more to player burnout in a sense, because now you're forced to repeat the procedure and process at breakneck speeds. So now, instead of doing it in a 20 minute match, you're doing it in a 6 minute match. Except now you can have three matches in a single 20 minute match, which is only going to make burnout feel that much worse. In a rather odd but confident proclamation, Take Two CEO May 29th, 2015 would state that Evolve is a permanent franchise alongside GTA, Red Dead, and Bioshock. Although the game had not yet sold 10 million units, Zelnick would go on to say that it was only a matter of time. If taken at face value, Zelnik's tone-deaf announcement would give Evolve more time to try to stabilize his population. Maybe the success on consoles made him more optimistic, but the PC population numbers for a AAA full-price multiplayer shooter left a lot to be desired, and claiming it was on par with other Titan series-level projects sounded a little Caesar-esque in terms of making strong and unjustified claims. Unfortunately, by 2021 and beyond, we have become conditioned to the concept of season passes, with the concept of games as a service, or gas, becoming increasingly more well-known these days as well. Yes, Evolve would continue on its gas course and launch yet another season pass in June of 2015, as many of you watching now with such exposure are undoubtedly guessing. At this point, I don't believe there's any proof that Turtle Rock Studios had much of a choice, and despite the fact that the season pass would bring four new hunters and a new monster, users were certainly going to grumble due to the proximity of having previously purchased the first season pass and the game itself. The population for Evolve would continue to suffer though, unfortunately, ending 2015 at 1,515 players peak and 504 players on average. By the summer of 2016, desperate changes were going to be needed to keep the struggling asymmetric shooter afloat. With peak population numbers in the 200s and the average population at just over 100. Turtle Rock Studios would drop a bomb on July 6, 2016 when they would announce that Evolve would become free to play. They would not only migrate to a free to play business, but would also migrate to a multiplayer service model for content updates, which according to them would result in more frequent item drops. The change was dubbed Evolve Stage 2, and the improvements would be released first on PC, followed by consoles at a later date. Chris Ashton and Phil Robb, the game's co-founders, said that the game didn't get a warm reaction, owed in part due to the game's DLC shitstorm. Now that's perfectly reasonable, and they're plainly implying that it was beyond their control. With promises of frequent new changes, content, and a more regular update schedule though, this seemed to be Evolve's best move going forward. Making their game more accessible to players as a free-to-play title was much better than sitting back and letting their title continue to falter past more repair. The free-to-play Switch would prove to be rather successful for Evolve, but after merely one more month, the population had already dove straight off a cliff, dropping down to 13,897 peak and 6,298 average players in August of 2016. 
Another month would pass, and despite Turtle Rock Studios working overtime to try to fill the holes in their sinking ship, then the population would drop again, this time to 4,985 players peak, and 2,499 players on average. Turtle Rock Studios announced on October 25th, 2016, that they would be ceasing support for Evolve, finishing development, and transferring the project to maintenance mode. At least, that's kind of how Take-Two described it. Turtle Rock Studios' response or post regarding the shutdown or end of development was much more solemn. They would express their dissatisfaction with being a AAA game developer who isn't self-funded and thus doesn't own their own intellectual property. This meant that the cessation of support was beyond their control, and that it was genuinely due to Take-Two withholding support. This would mean that Stage 2 would never come to consoles, and the future development would be ended. Turtle Rock Studios asked for fans to not abandon them, and stated that this wasn't the end for them, but it was certainly the end for Evolve, who would have its dedicated online servers shut down September 2018, leaving only local hosted servers left. In a post-mortem post we have already kind of referenced before in the video, June 5th, 2018, Matt Colville, the lead writer on Evolve, would detail a number of the game's reasons for failure. We covered a few of them already, but we did miss a few important points. According to Colville, Turtle Rock was limited on options regarding updating the game and were only allowed to update it every three months. The reasons for this are unclear, but according to Colville, it severely bottlenecked the changes and fixes that Turtle Rock wanted to make. Could have been something to do with the content or update policy Take-Two had enforced on them, but it seemed like Turtle Rock was at least implying it was out of their control, at the very least. <laughs> cough, cough. Coville would go on to further state that I sincerely believe there was nothing wrong with Evolve at launch we couldn't fix if we could update the game live. So although I have said I don't like blindly blaming publishers, sometimes we have enough evidence including from the developers themselves to do it kind of in clear conscience. And Turtle Rock Studios with more freedom and an update schedule would have given them a better chance of success certainly. That's the interesting and rather tragic thing about Evolve. Besides its immense issues suffered at the hands of draconic money-grubbing publishers like Take-Two, the game itself was also fatally flawed, as the lead writer would even admit. So in the end, even if it was a different publisher, or Evolve was self-funded, there's always a chance that Turtle Rock Studios wouldn't have been able to fix their issues that run deep into the core game design, unless they changed that design. Colville would actually hint at this, that they could have actually done a hunter versus computer controlled monster style game, where instead of a player controlling the monster the computer does, and a game like that would have had more broad appeal, and actually I'm inclined to agree. Others have also suggested merely mimicking Left 4 Dead's competitive PvP mode, which Turtle Rock Studios would go on to do in their spiritual successor title to Left 4 Dead, Back 4 Blood later on. They certainly would have had a better shot at either of these styles, which makes the whole story just a damn shame. I think we've covered just about all of the largest contributing factors to the tragic death of a game Evolve. I hope you've been paying attention to the clues and evidence discovered along the way, because it's time to crack the case, detectives. Hit the music, Tom. Take-Two poorly handled Evolve and Turtle Rock Studios. Take-Two cut funding in under two years of development. A $60 price tag with pre-order only bonuses and day one DLC and a season pass. Expectations were simply just too sky high. 4 vs 1 proved to be a difficult design to pull off. It had an overly simplistic and repetitive gameplay loop. The Hunter gameplay required too many roleplay actors for it to function properly. After launching the game, Turtle Rock Studios was unable to live update the game. Evolve felt shoehorned into being an eSport. And that's the case, lads. Evolve might be a game that gets absolutely no love despite helping pioneer asymmetric shooters, leading to other titles such as Friday the 13th, Dead by Daylight, and even Turtle Rock Studios' next title, Back for Blood. But that's probably because most of the memories and stories surrounding Evolve are those of grief and what could have beens, really. Playing as a monster was certainly a highlight, though, and since you can still technically play the game, you could still go experience that. Turtle Rock Studios put out another zombie co-op game, dubbed Back for Blood, which I'm currently loving, but have some similar concerns about content issues and a full price tag being asked for those who don't use Game Pass. So keep an eye on that project as well. I for one am excited for the possibility of more asymmetric shooters where you can play as the bad guy, and would like to thank Turtle Rock Studios for taking a risk at doing such. 
even if ultimately it was unsuccessful. Tis the nature of innovation. Thanks for watching, detectives. So here we are. 10 billion souls living in the crush of the megacities. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. What is Squarespace you say? Well, Squarespace is an easy to use, powerful and beautiful online platform where you create your very own website with the help of their templates and service. You can then connect with your audience through members only content, manage members and email communications and get audience feedback all on Squarespace. You can track things like unique visitors, page views and even get insight into which are your top traffic sources. You can automatically push your website content to your favorite social media channels too so people can follow you there as well. Squarespace can even help you set up your e-commerce easily through the platform allowing you to manage inventory, promote products and streamline any bookkeeping needs. You can then take your products and ship them globally. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to www.squarespace.com slash nerdslayer for my code to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you again, Squarespace, for sponsoring this video.